Black people, we are our own worst enemy. It's late night. I'm sipping some bourbon, puffing on an L, watching this video that went viral this past week of a group of young girls, young black girls. That is the most important part to this, in my opinion, a group of young black girls who couldn't be no more than five or six singing and dancing to a sexy red verse. The lyrics these young girls were singing and dancing to go something like this. Bend that ass over. Let that coochie breathe. Hands on your knees. Hands on your knees. Hands on your knees. Shake that ass for Drake. Shake that ass for me. Now, I like the song. When I'm in a bar or a club with a drink, dancing with my lady. Dancing with a bunch of other adults. I like the song. But it bothers me. Seeing little girls. Dancing to this. But Dusty Vision. They were dancing and singing. To the edited version of the song. I don't care if it was the edited version. These kids nowadays aren't stupid. They know how to navigate the internet better than we do. They can easily find the non-edited version of this song on YouTube. The song itself is called Rich Baby Daddy. Mommy, what does Rich Baby Daddy mean? Side note, I hate when women call the father of their child my baby daddy. I hate when men call the mother of their children my baby mama. My BM. Can we stop that? We can't blame Sexy Red for this though. The blame is solely on the parents. If I were 22 years old and I was making music, people were shaking their asses too that made their coochies breathe i'd probably do it too i wouldn't give a damn if i was destroying a generation of females by doing so that would be my point of view if i were 22 i'm knocking on 50's door i can't condone this i can't lie though that song does hit That song does hit for adults, not for kids. That song does hit for adults. I've always been a big Drake supporter. I've loved Drake's delivery, his consistency, and his flow. And I think Drake will go down in history as one of the greats to ever do this. Agree with me or disagree with me if you want. Now, Sexy Red... I I don't know. It's a little too early to tell if she'll be around in 10 years or if she'll be gone in six months. I mean, Nicki Minaj is still around. Her career is still popping. She just had a number one album released and it was fire. I listened to it. I like Nicki Minaj. I think Nicki Minaj is the greatest female MC to ever do this. Agree with me or disagree with me. I saw her come up from the mix up di- mixtape days to now. Agree with me or disagree with me. I think Nicki Minaj is one of the greats. She's still around. Who would have thought though? Cardi B is around. So who's to say that Sexy Red won't be around in 10 years? I don't know. I'm 50 years old. I don't understand this shit and I shouldn't understand it. I'm way out of the loop. But don't get it twisted. When I was young, female MCs were doing this as well. Lil' Kim, Foxy Brown, Trina, Adina Howard. 
I mean, Missy eventually, Brat started taking her clothes off eventually. Like, uh, they all event, like a lot of them eventually did this. They were doing the exact same thing. This is nothing new. I had Little Kim's, I jerked off to Little Kim's 1990 whatever four album poster that was the one that went viral when viral wasn't even a thing everybody if you are in your 40s you know exactly what little kim picture i'm talking about the pose where she's squatting with the coochie lips we all do i need to go on okay i'm not the only one who jerked off to it i'm just the one the only one who's man enough to admit it but sex sells. And I bet you a lot of people bought that Lil' Kim album based off that poster. Without hearing a lyric. They bought it. Foxy Brown. The creepy weird thing about Foxy Brown in hindsight as, once again, almost a man who's touching 50 years old. Foxy Brown was like... 6, 15, 16, when she was talking about these things, she was getting very explicit. Very explicit. Like adult type explicit. Talking about her ill nana and all that. Y'all remember that? Do y'all know what an ill nana is? Does anyone know what an ill nana is? I can tell you what an ill nana is. I've had a few ill nanas in my past. But should a 16-year-old be talking about her ill nana? So once again, this is nothing new. Making your bounce your ass, bitch, and make a coochie breathe. Break that ass for me. That's nothing new. Trina was another one. Came in the game young as hell. I don't know if she was under 18. She was pretty damn close, though. And she was talking about the same exact stuff is there a difference i don't think there's a difference i'm being biased in my opinion low kim foxy brown trina they're all better mcs to to uh than uh sexy red but once again i'm out of the loop there's a kid right now who who is like you are tripping old man sexy red has bars like i'm out of the loop i don't even get a vote a vote the target demographic in hip-hop is what is it uh, when you buy shit is 18 to 34 or something like that when you actually buy and consume and go to concerts and support artists once you hit 34 which i'm well past you're not considered a vote anymore so what i think of sexy red guess what nobody gives a damn <laughs> about what i think of sexy red but as a man when i see Five-year-olds dancing and saying lyrics like, bend that ass over, let that coochie breathe, hands on your knees, hands on your knees, shake that ass for Drake, shake that ass for me. That bothers me. That bothers me. And maybe that's how my parents, my grandparents, my aunts felt about the hip hop I was listening to back when i was a kid i mean think about it when i was a kid there were groups out there screaming out f the police how crazy must that would have been must that have been back in 1988 88 was a different time ladies and gentlemen it's 2024 i know we're used to hearing f the police and my booty hole pink and my asshole brown or whatever like we're we're used to hearing that stuff so it's like there's no shock factor there's nothing but take yourself back to 1988 a group like nwa saying f the police we had to sneak and listen to albums when i was a kid when i was in ninth grade my best friend camille my best friend in the whole wide world my best friend he had Drew Down's album. He bought it like behind the scenes and tell his parents. And they had the Wu-Tang album. And we had to literally hide and listen to those albums. You remember Drew Down? I'm Pimp of the Year, baby. Pimp. Pimp on. I got all the ladies. Pimp. 
Pip on. We got all the ladies. We had to hide and listen to that album. We had to hide and listen to Wu Tang Clan's first album. Because Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. And you can't say the F word in my house in my Christian home. So we had to hide. So this is nothing new, guys. When my son was younger, I let him listen to whatever songs he really liked. And he liked a lot of hip hop and rap that had cuss words and may not have been the best message. I remember one of my son's favorite songs as a kid was E-40 and Fabulous' song. Automatic, systematic, do what you do, play. Just keep that money on your mind. He used to love that song. Play that song over, daddy. Then when you hear the lyrics, you're like, damn, should I let my son hear this? My son hear this song? But if there's one thing I will say about most people, most people know this is entertainment. When I was a kid, I knew NWA wasn't out there busting on cops. I knew Easy e didn't cold cut a fort in in court and, and pulled out a submachine Uzi. I knew I, I knew this was all even as a 9, 10, 11, 12 year old kid. I knew this was all entertainment. I got it. I, I really got it early on. I never really believed. And then growing up then doing my own research, I happen to be right. And then doing my show with Alonzo Williams, the godfather of West Coast hip hop on NWA stories with Lonzo. I realized, yeah, they were all actors. And I got it back then. I wasn't one of those kids who got, who got, who thought this was real. I knew this was just like me watching Terminator 2 with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I got it. But that was me. And not as many people are strong as me. Which is why we have a whole generation now of people who smoke weed and think it's okay, pop pills and things okay, like hit their women. Like we have a generation, this generation is effed up. And you know what? It kind of sort of started in my generation. And I want to apologize on behalf. But keep in mind, guys, I was a kid back then. So I can't even apologize because I was only 12 years old. So I was influenced by the Dr. Dre's. Okay, I was influenced by the Snoop Dogg's calling my girl a bitch. I was influenced, but I knew it was all entertainment. But what to say there wasn't a little influence I'd be lying. I'd be lying a bit. But one thing I did know is that Easy E and NWA, I, they're not, they're, they weren't doing what they said they were doing. Can I say the same for this generation who believes everything they read on the internet? They believe everything they see on Instagram. They believe everything. I'm worried because this generation, I feel, I feel, and no disrespect to you 20-something-year-olds because a lot of you are making a lot of money and a lot of you are doing things that we could have never imagined doing back in 1988. But I think this generation is a little more weak-minded. A little more weak-minded. So when they see someone like Sexy Red, the tattoos on her face, twerking while she's pregnant, Shaking her ass and making her coochie breathe. I think it's going to have a bigger influence in 20 years than what I was seeing back when I was a kid in the 90s. <sighs> Watching these five-year-olds, six-year-olds dancing, talking about making their, shaking their ass, making their coochie breathe, hands on your knees. It's not cute. It's not cute. It's sad.
and it bothers me.